This is just a little bonus video in the RAS series. Since we just did the read work, we're going to talk about another problem. Okay, so you get a bad read on a harp, see, and you buy a new read, and uh, you're excited because you're going to put it on, and you get the tool, and you pop that rivet out. You order the read from the manufacturer, from a reliable, good manufacturer, and then when you go to put it in, you're going to find out that quite a bit of the time, the hole that's in the reed that the little screw and nut will go into, because you don't put a rivet back in, you use a little screw and a little, little nut in a kit. The hole in the reed by three ten thousandths, perhaps, or less. And then, it won't fit. So what you do is uh, you take a little augering tool mm -hmm. Put it in the hole, see, and you go. You press on the part you want to grind down. And because they're brass or stainless steel, you can, these are very stiff too. You can you can get through it and you test it until uh, it 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 is lined up perfectly. And then you can put it together. But these are things that, you know, when you work on harps and you're like, well. Shouldn't I be able to take, you know, shouldn't I be able to take it for granted that the hole that's drilled in the reed that's from the manufacturer on a quality harp is going to fit perfectly? Shouldn't I be able to take that for granted? No. 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 I remember there was a harp that was sent to me by a friend. Couldn't get it airtight. Turned out the bottom of the mouthpiece was misshapen. It had a little bulb of like metal in it. So I had to grind that out. Once it was ground out, it worked great. But a lot of this stuff is just this real picky little hand workmanship stuff. And if you are go slow and you're not in a rush and you're willing to maybe make a mistake or two, I mean, you know, putting reeds in it, 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 it's a skill, and it develops over time. It's like breast savers, putting them on. First time you go to put one on, you're probably going to ruin the breast saver. That's normal. And then you get to where you get it, you get it on there right. And then from there on, you can do better. But uh, the world of uh, customization and repair on chromatic harmonicas, I mean, if you look up my stuff and you go, God, he looks like a picky person to me. He's just so picky. He wants this this way, he wants this this way, he sits and he thinks about stuff all the time, and he's all looing the light stuff and the rubber glove stuff and all this, you know, safety stuff, and geez, he must be a nut. Uh, all this stuff is part of the mindset, staying safe, doing very difficult work that every little thing you do has some ramification. Um, and uh, like you probably, you've already seen the video on um, doing the air tightening of the comb. That, that sanding game can go bad if you press on one side harder than the other. It won't be where it should be. Um, if you lap improperly, you could go worse, not better. So it's just a world of a lot of pickiness. And so you kind of get into this mindset of uh, zoning in and thinking about it. Don't work when you're tired. Don't work. If you're upset emotionally, do not work on your harmonica. Any more than I would play a guitar or piano if I were upset.
everybody's human. I mean, we all get upset about things that we're not happy about. And you got to be in a pretty, pretty clear space. But you, uh, you go for ultra sensitivity. Safety is always absolutely primary. Never jeopardize your eyes. You know, there was a very well-known uh, harmonica player. who You'd recognize him his name if I gave you the name, but I'm not going to give you the name. And all he was doing was taking a screw uh, out of a reed plate and it snapped and it went in his eye. So we were talking on the phone. He goes, yeah, I, I remember you always wearing those eye protection and shit. And I didn't think I needed them. And I'll be damned with a little head of that screw and pop right off and came up and hit me right in my eye. And it was in the white of his eye and he had a little red mark there for a while. It didn't damage his vision. It hurt. But you never know. Uh, when I grind those sliders, I got a full face mask with carbon filtration on it and full body suit. Oftentimes leather gloves too. Because that stuff will come and get you. What if a Dremel tool disintegrates while I'm using it? The stone will go everywhere. I remember one time I was cutting a slider and I was using a, um, oh my God, I was using a miter saw. Oh, that was stupid. And it grabbed that stuff and it exploded it like a shotgun. Not towards me, but... What if it had been towards me? I, mean, I, I never used that saw. That's why I got the band saw. But you, you can't cut those things with a rotary saw. That acrylic will kill you. But anyway, I'm just saying that um, very well-known players have been as horrified of you, as you have been to see you know, what to do. So safety is always first. Lighting is very important. You've seen... Look at that light, man. That is a light. And uh, it's got a lot of bulbs in it, too. Kick up a lot of light, different colors too. I've got a tan and kind of a white light in there, both. Anyway, this is just stuff to keep you safe. But I do enjoy it, but it's a game played safe.